Hi guys. So in the name of discussing different ideas involving art and the creative process, I wanted to bring up a topic today that was provoked by, in part, by reading this book, beginning to read this book, Reclaiming Art in the Age of Artifice by J.F. Martel. And I really appreciate some of the things that he is saying in this book because he, I think, articulates very skillfully some concepts and ideas that I have been plagued by and dogged by for a long time and just couldn't quite find the words for how to describe or what was going on. So um, I'm just ad-libbing right now, obviously. If you disagree with me, great. If you want to point out things in the comments, great, please do. I'm interested in learning how to have conversation and disagree civilly with each other. I think this is a skill that we need to learn. <laughs> I was going to say in this country, but probably everywhere. Um, this country being the US. So anyway, this idea that I'm referring to is um, distinguishes between art and basically not art. Things can be beautiful, things can be aesthetically pleasing, things can be well designed, but yet be fundamentally characteristically different in their essential nature than what I will call true art. These things might be advertisements, advertisements might have elements of beautiful design, obviously. The distinguishing factor between art and non-art is that art doesn't have an agenda. Okay, I, I really feel that I can get behind this one. So when an artist or someone who's striving to be an artist engages in the creative process, I think the basic drive be behind striving for art is to be immersed in an experience of love or captivation with whatever it is your medium is. That you could be an actor, you could be a dancer, you could be a painter, you could be a musician, you could be a writer, on and on and on. But during the act of creation, you are ensconced in a conversation with existence. And an essential characteristic of this is that it's an edge between what you think you know and what you absolutely don't know because reality is weird and it's much larger than us and it's full of mystery. And I think that this not knowing is just absolutely essential. And it shows up in different ways, obviously, but it's absolutely essential in the artistic practice and the creative process. And that necessitates taking a risk. And it also necessitates letting go of your agendas. <laughs> and I'm not talking about some pure state where you just don't have agendas and you don't have thoughts. And you know, we're all humans here and I'm very, very aware of that. I'm just saying that that is not the underlying drive. So my um, point of contention maybe is a good way of saying it over many, 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 many years is encountering this realm, this manifestation that really has a strong agenda. The most obvious way that I can describe this is a political agenda. And it's not at all that art doesn't carry ideas, but it doesn't come from the preconception of an agenda and the desire on the part of the maker to carry through, use the, the piece of work to carry through that message. Because if this is true, then that message that's being carried through, it's already known. Are you following me? Like, it's already an idea that's been formulated. It's already a thought 
that's familiar to the population. You know, anything like politically correct, politically incorrect, that's all already been said. You have an idea and you're trying to put it forth, to push it through, to convince someone else, to tell someone else your message. Consensus. So Martel mentions consensus as being part of the known world, the preconceived in the realm of generalizations and customs. So this is expressions that represent reality as though it has already been mapped out. This is fundamentally different from true art, which stills the mind, which is something new. It's revelatory. It's revelatory to the artist in the act of creating. And this, you know, th there's so many different manifestations for how this can look. But for me, when I'm in my practice, when I don't know where I'm going, when I'm improvising and I'm, I'm letting things, you know, a little bit of a cliche here, letting things come through. It doesn't mean that you have to like it and it doesn't mean that you will recognize it. An interesting thought that was shared with me a while back was if you don't like something, if you're like Rothko, what the hell? That doesn't make any sense. This fucking block of one color. I don't get it. You're having a reaction. I think when there's a reaction, there's a response there. There's some kind of ener energy exchange happening there. So that's always something to investigate, whether we're talking about art or artifice, non-art, propaganda. If there's a reaction within your being, there's something worth examining there. But with true art, I would argue that it takes some work oftentimes. Sometimes, and I think some people are more open to this, it depends on maybe your education, which does not have to be formal. It depends on your person, whether you are receptive to certain things or not receptive. But I certainly think that it can be something that you become receptive to via your own volition or time. So one of my favorite writers, Jeanette Winterson, has said that literature requires time. You have to spend enough time with a piece of literature, with a novel, in order to entrain yourself with the rhythm of the writer so that you can actually begin to join them on that journey. I had this experience with jazz. I went to New Orleans as an 18 year old for college and I had never really listened to jazz before except for the crap that, you know, whatever. But I went to New Orleans and I kind of wanted to learn about jazz because it seemed cool. So there was some energy there for me, which is, you know, you look at what's attractive to you, if it just hooks you a little bit. But I didn't initially like it. I, it was kind of a little like, uh, but I kept listening to it. And over time, it became basically less unfamiliar, less edgy, less scary. That, that which is unfamiliar is challenging. And I think, we just have to admit that sometimes we just don't want the challenge. That's what entertainment is for. That's kind of what propaganda is for. It doesn't challenge you. It just gives you what you already know. So you can get on and start waving your flag around and be like, I'm on this side. I already know it. I already know who I am. That's why I think art is threatening in a culture that is so founded upon being impervious to vulnerability, to knowing what you are, who you are, and going out to conquer the enemy. This is a very suspect position because the enemy is usually, if not always, a projection of your own internal demons. But we won't go there right now because I'm trying to keep it short <laughs> and I'm failing. So anyway, that's the idea that art now I'm gonna use Martel's words to sum up right now. Art is expression for its own sake. Again, with expression, you may or may not know yourself as the artist, what it means or why it is. In fact, I think that's usually a good bet. I often don't know what the hell my work means until way after the fact, and then I can put meaning on it. Art moves us, Martel says, whereas artifice, advertisement, etc tries to make us move. So yeah, 
there's the thought. Let me know what you think. Thoughts, comments, questions. All right, peace out.